In this lecture, we study a specification of Paxos commit, a fault-tolerant distributed algorithm that implements transaction commit. The spec illustrates most of the TLA plus constructs you don't already know that you will use in writing specs. I hope you'll also study the algorithm itself. I think it's neat. But then I'm prejudiced, since Jim Gray and I invented it. But that's up to you. These lectures are about TLA+, not distributed algorithms. There's an obvious problem with two-phase commit. It can hang forever if the transaction manager fails. There's a simple engineering solution. Have a backup transaction manager take over if the primary transaction manager fails. You can find this solution in database textbooks. It's straightforward to implement and to test that it works. The system is deployed and works fine, and everyone is happy until one day the primary transaction manager decides to commit and then pauses for some reason. Perhaps it's preempted by a higher priority task. The backup transaction manager thinks the primary failed and it decides to take over. The backup transaction manager broadcasts an abort message. Meanwhile, the primary transaction manager resumes and broadcasts a commit message. This causes some resource managers to abort and others to commit, which constitutes a system failure. Finding fault-tolerant distributed algorithms is hard. They're easy to get wrong, and it's hard to find that they're wrong by testing. It's important to get the algorithm right before we code it. Writing and checking a TLA plus spec is the best way I know to do that. Paxos commit is a fault tolerant transaction commit algorithm described in this 2006 paper by Jim Gray and me. The paper explains the algorithm and specifies it in a TLA plus module named Paxos commit. We're looking at this module for two reasons. The first is to see what a real spec looks like. The second is to learn some more TLA+. You should read the paper if you want to understand the algorithm. This lecture explains only the TLA+, operators you haven't seen yet that are used in the spec. Stop the video now and download module Paxos commit to the same folder as module T commit and download the paper if you want to read it. The module Paxos commit that we use here, as well as modules T commit and two phase used in previous lectures, differ slightly from the ones in the paper. The module begins with an extend statement that imports the definition of arithmetic operators from the standard integers module. The module then defines maximum of s to be the largest element of s if s is a finite set of integers and to equal minus 1 if it's the empty set. We don't care what it equals if s is infinite or not a set of numbers. The definition has this form. The smallest number in s is written this way where the choose expression equals an arbitrarily chosen value n in s satisfying the condition that n is greater than or equal to every element in s. If s is finite and non-empty, then there is exactly one such n. That condition on n is written this way. It's a little easier to read with parentheses. This formula states that for every m in s, n is greater than or equal to m. In general, the expression choose variable v in expression s colon formula p equals if there is at least one value v in the set s for which formula p is true, then the expression equals some such v. If there's more than one, then the semantics of TLA plus don't specify which one. Else, if there is no such v, then the value of the choose expression is completely unspecified, and TLC will report an error if that's the case when it tries to evaluate the expression. For example, 
This expression equals an unspecified integer between 1 and 99. We don't know which one. It might equal 37 or it might not. The semantics of TLA plus don't say. In math, any expression always equals itself. So this choose expression always equals itself. There is no non-determinism in any mathematical expression, including a choose expression. If this choose expression equals 37 today, it will still equal 37 next week. TLC will always get the same number when it evaluates this expression. You shouldn't care what number. The formula x prime in the set 1 dot dot 99 allows the value of x in the next state to be any of the 99 numbers from 1 to 99. The formula x prime equals this choose expression allows the value of x in the next state to be some particular number between 1 and 99, perhaps 37. There's no reason why you'd ever want to write something like this. You should write this choose expression only when there's exactly one value v in s satisfying formula p. For example, the way it was used in the definition of maximum of s. Or when it's part of a larger expression whose value doesn't depend on which possible value of v is chosen. We'll see an example of that later. After defining maximum, the module contains a constant statement declaring these four constants. RM is again a set of resource managers, and acceptor is another set of processes called acceptors. The constants majority and ballot are sets described in the following statement. The assumed statement asserts assumptions being made about the constants. For example, the second conjunct asserts the assumption that zero is an element of the set ballot. These assumptions use some TLA plus notation that you haven't seen yet. NAT is defined in the imported integers module to be the set of natural numbers, that is, the non-negative integers. The first conjunct asserts that ballot is a subset of NAT, meaning that every element of ballot is an element of the set NAT of natural numbers. The subset symbol is typed backslash subset EQ. Subset acceptor is the set of all subsets of the set acceptor. Mathematicians call it the power set of acceptor and write it P of acceptor. The conjunct asserts the assumption that every element of majority is a subset of the set acceptor. This sub-expression is the intersection of the sets MS1 and MS2. It's the set consisting of all elements in both MS1 and MS2. The intersection symbol is typed either backslash intersect or backslash cap. The conjunct asserts that every two elements of the set majority are sets having at least one element in common. TLC will check all these assumptions. The module next defines messages to be a set consisting of several kinds of records. The definition contains this expression. This set minus operator is defined as follows. For any sets S and T, S set minus T is the set of all elements in S that are not in T. For example, the integers from 10 to 20, set minus the integers from 1 to 14, equals the set of integers from 15 to 20. So, ballot set minus the set containing only zero is the set of non-zero elements in ballot. The module next declares its variables and defines the type correctness invariant PC type OK. As in the two-phase commit spec, there is a variable MSGS whose value is a set of messages. PC type OK also asserts that the value of the variable A state is a function with domain RM, such that for every R in RM, A state of R is a function with domain acceptor, such that for every A in the set acceptor, A state of R of A is a record with these three fields. And, for example, 
A state of R of A dot bal is in the set ballot or equals minus one. There's nothing new here. It's just a little more complicated than the formulas you've seen so far. That's true for what follows in the module up until this definition of phase 2a, which introduces several new features of TLA+. The first is this let in expression. The let clause makes three definitions local to the let in expression. The defined identifiers can be used only in the expression. The next TLA plus notation introduced here is this set expression. It equals the subset of MSGS consisting of all its elements M satisfying this formula. The let in expression also introduces another set notation. This expression equals the set of all elements of the form m dot bal for all m in the set m set. These are two different set constructors. The first has the form variable v in set s colon formula p. It's the subset of s consisting of all values v for which the formula p is true. For example, this expression equals the set of all natural numbers greater than 17. The second constructor has the form expression E colon variable V in set S. It's the set consisting of all values assumed by the expression E when V is an element of S. For example, this expression equals the set of all squares of natural numbers. There's one more thing I'd like to point out about this expression. The choose expression can allow more than one possible choice for M. In any reachable state of the algorithm, all possible choices of M have the same value of M dot val. Paxos commit is not an easy algorithm to understand, and this is probably its most subtle part. I do not know how to write a clearer, precise definition of this step of the algorithm. If you understand the algorithm, then when you get used to the math, I think you'll find this definition as elegant as I do. The next new construct is in this definition. In this subformula, you haven't seen this form of accept expression. It's an abbreviation for a state except its value on m dot ins equals a state of m dot ins except its value on acc equals a state of m dot ins of acc except its m bal component equals m dot bal. Whew! If you stop and decipher this, you'll see that this formula corresponds to this programming language statement. So you just have to remember this idiom and not try to figure out the accept expression. That's what I do. This definition contains another generalization of the accept construct. If you want, you can try to figure out what this accept expression means when I tell you that this subformula describes the same change to a state as executing this sequence of three program statements. Notice the correspondence between the parts of the accept expression and the program statements. Open module Paxos commit in the toolbox and create a new model. You have to enter the initial and next state formulas and the values of the constants. The initial and next state formulas are named PC init and PC next. Now for the values assigned to the constants. We normally start with a tiny model, but we'll skip that. Instead, we'll use a model which, if you understand the algorithm, you'll see is the smallest one that could reveal a non-trivial error. We assign a set of three model values to acceptor and a set of two model values to RM. We assign this set of two numbers to ballot and this set of sets of acceptors to majority. This is an ordinary assignment because the model values A1, A2, and A3 
are declared in the assignment of a set of model values to acceptor. The set we assign to RM can be a symmetry set because its elements aren't used elsewhere. But what about the set we assign to acceptor? Its elements are used in the value assigned to majority. But this use is OK because the expression they appear in is symmetric in the elements of the set we assign to acceptor. Remember, this means that interchanging any two elements of that set leaves the expression unchanged. For example, if we interchange A1 and A3 in the expression, we get this expression. And these two expressions are equal because they describe sets with the same three elements. One, two, three. In general, it's OK to use elements of a symmetry set in an expression assigned to another constant if the expression is symmetric in the elements of the symmetry set. There's just one additional condition a symmetry set must satisfy that I can now explain. Elements of a symmetry set, or a constant that's assigned elements of a symmetry set, may not appear in a choose expression. In the Paxos commit spec, elements of a symmetry set don't appear in a choose because they can appear only in these assignments and there's no choose there. To verify that a constant which is assigned elements of a symmetry set doesn't appear in a choose expression, we must check that these constants don't appear in any choose expression in the spec. You can check that they don't. Assign these values in the model, letting acceptor and RM be symmetry sets. We should check that the algorithm is correct. We'll see in a later video how to check that it implements transaction commit. For now, there are two invariants we can check. The type correctness invariant, PC type OK, that we looked at earlier, and the invariant TC consistent, which is imported with an instance statement from module T commit. Add these invariants to the what to check part of the model and run TLC on the model. TLC takes about 30 seconds to run the model on my laptop using two cores. It reports no error and finds about 120,000 distinct states. If we change the model to assign ballot a set of three numbers instead of two, TLC runs for about one and a half hours on a 128 core machine and finds about 220 million states. We use very small models because execution time and space grow exponentially with the size of the model. What good is checking such small models? To answer that question, make this change to the value the model assigns to majority. Delete this element of an element of the set. The expression is no longer symmetric in A1, A2, and A3. So we have to change the assignment to acceptor so it's no longer a symmetry set. Now if you run TLC on the model, it will complain that this assumption is violated because this assertion is no longer true. So we have to comment it out. Run TLC on the model. Because the assumption is not satisfied, the algorithm is incorrect for this changed value of majority. TLC reports that invariant TC consistent is violated and it produces a minimal length 14 state error trace. The Paxos commit algorithm is correct. But this example shows that even a very small model can catch an error in a real algorithm. You've now learned enough of the TLA plus language to start writing your own specs. However, before you do that, you should know more about what TLA plus specs mean. In particular, you should understand what it means for the Paxos commit algorithm to implement the transaction commit spec. That's the topic of the next lecture.